Once upon a time while I was living on the East Coast, I came across a strongman gym. I had never been to a strongman gym, so I was very excited to try it out. When I first walked into the gym, I was immediately drawn to the log. My training partner and I would show up to the gym every Saturday and max out on the log press. I loved it so much that I bought my own log. As I got stronger, I soon ran into a problem. My press was continuing to go up, but my clean began to struggle. My log press was not my limiting factor, it was my log clean. If I could just get that log up to my shoulders, I knew I could press it. But after battling with the log for 45 seconds, I would eventually get it to my shoulders, only to have zero energy left for the press. I would frequently watch old reruns of World's Strongest Man finals, and I noticed that the strongman rarely ever struggled with the log clean. It was always the press that determined whether or not they could successfully lock out the log. Why was I so backwards? Because I did not know how to correctly or efficiently clean a log to the rack position. I came across a How to Log Press YouTube video featuring a guy named Kale Beck. After implementing the tips and techniques offered in that video, I PR'd on my log clean and press during my next training session. Why am I sharing this story with you? Because I'm sure that some of you can relate to the problem I was having. I hope this video helps. How to clean a log. Wait a second. First, let's talk about feet placement. Set your feet just outside shoulder width. Then, point your toes slightly outward. You do not want to set up with a narrow stance, toes pointing straight forward. This can cause your knees to buckle inwards, and it may shift the weight onto your toes, causing you to lose balance. Keeping a wide base and toes pointing outward will allow your knees to push out when you dip down. This will lead to a vertical and strong dip and drive. Now let's talk about log placement. If you're a beginner or you're not strong enough to lift a loaded log yet, avoid picking the log up from flat on the floor. Instead, prop the log up onto a couple of car tires so that you can place your feet underneath the log. Bumper plates will work too. You can even use the top of some jerk blocks if your gym has them. Now, pay attention to this tip. It may be the most important. Once you set your feet, grab the log handles and angle the front of them down. This will raise the back of the handles up to a 45 degree angle towards your body. Alright, let's pick this thing up. With the front of the handles angled down, I want you to stand up with the log. Once the log has reached your knees, row yourself back down under the log. Your elbows should be pointing straight towards the sky. Let's look at that again. Front of the handles angled down, stand up, row yourself back down, elbows towards the sky. And full speed. And from the front. You do not want to grab the log in this flat position with the handles parallel to the ground. This will most likely cause or allow your elbows to point back behind you. You also do not want to attempt to get the log up to your shoulders with straight arms. Next cue. Once you pull the log into your lap, you'll notice your stomach is resting on the log. I want you to squat down and get the log nice and high on your chest. So, a brief recap of the initial pull. Angle the front of the handles down at a 45 degree angle. Stand up until the log reaches your knees. Row yourself down under the log. Elbows pointed toward the sky. Now you're ready to roll the log up your body. Take note of the elbows and their rotation. They go from pointing up towards the ceiling to pointing straight ahead. When your elbows are pointing back behind you, the rotation is significantly shortened. This makes you less powerful and less efficient. Again, start with your elbows high, throw your head back, rotate your elbows forward into the correct rack position, maintain contact between the log and your body throughout the entire roll. Starting with your elbows back will not allow you to generate as much torque on the log. Allow this wrench to illustrate your elbow position. 
Right now the handle of the wrench is pointing back. When I rotate it to the front, it's only getting about 180 degrees of torque. When the handle is pointing up, like your elbow should be, and I rotate the wrench to the front, I'm getting 270 degrees of torque, and I'm being more efficient with only one turn. Now, let's identify correct rack position. Elbows pointing forward, head back, body slightly leaning back. In this position, the log is directly over the center of my foot, which in turn ensures that I am balanced. Another good tip for getting in a good rack position is to flare your lats. This will create more surface area for the log to rest on. Do not treat the rack position with a log the same way you would the rack position with a barbell. As you can see, my elbows are only slightly in front of the barbell and pointing down, and my torso is very vertical. In this position, the bar is directly over the center of my foot. This is the correct rack position for a barbell, not necessarily for a log. If I were to try and rack a log the same way I would with a barbell, the log would be too far forward and the weight would be in front of my center of balance. Sometimes strongman is uncomfortable. Get your head back and allow yourself some body lean. Now we'll talk about a very common mistake that I've seen. A lot of people treat their log clean the same way they do an Olympic barbell clean. More specifically, a hang power clean. Arms straight, acting only as levers, heaving the weight up, and then quickly jumping back under the log. This is exceptional Olympic lifting form, but it's terrible log clean form. You may be able to get away with this while the weight is light, but eventually you'll run into a max log event and this technique will not work. The press is fairly simple, but there are still some important points to cover. I cannot stress enough the importance of a straight dip and drive. You need to keep the log directly over the center of your balance as you dip down, as you drive the log up, and as you press and lock out the log overhead. You need to own the log in this position. You can't let it push you around. Setting up with a slightly wider than shoulder width stance, pushing your knees out as you dip down, keeping your elbows up, and keeping your head back will ensure a straight dip and drive. Failure to maintain a straight dip and drive will result in the log rolling forward as you dip down. If you continue to do this, your press will always suck because you will not have a solid base to press from. Now that you know the importance of a straight dip and drive, let's identify the actual press. Start with your head back behind the log, press the log straight up, then push your head forward so the log is over your ears. Proper lockout will be achieved when the log is over and in line with your ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and feet. Finally, a quick recap. Set your feet slightly wider than shoulder width, toes pointed slightly out. Tilt the front of the handles down at a 45 degree angle. Stand up until the log clears your knees, sit back down, elbows pointed towards the sky. Squat down to achieve contact between the log and your chest. Rotate your elbows all the way around until they are pointing forward. Roll the log up your body. Flare your lats. Push your knees out as you dip down. Drive the log straight up. Push your head through. Be awesome. And tread untamed.